Look who's in the house. One of the most energetic, one of the most fun guys you'll ever see on a baseball field. And his story is really unbelievable about where he came from and kind of the adversity that he faced. One of the most successful Rule 5 draftees ever in the history of baseball, Shane Victorino. I gotta ask you, I mean, your entire life, and especially your pro career, it's like 162 games every year plus, I don't know, almost 30 spring training games. When a baseball career ends and you retire, what have you been doing with yourself? Honestly, trying to get into your guys' world. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I guess it's something, you know, I was saying a second ago to some of the individuals out there in the room, and I said, I basically have a high school diploma. And I, when I say that, I say it respectfully so that, you know, the 13 years of my career taught me more about life, about basically committing to what is right from wrong. In today's world, I feel like we're, everybody has to be, you know, everything's the same, everything's becoming this, you know, organic, everything's got to be, you know, me and you are the same, like, Yes, we can be that way, but I feel like if we learn how to push one another, so when he was talking about adversity and growing up, like, you know, where I was from, uh, you know, you, you start understanding, like, how simple life should be and how simple life can be. So when you go out and, like I said, look into business ventures and look into kind of this, it's organic, it's the same thing. It's like, I basically want to build the greatest team I can build in whatever venture that I'm going to attack. So I've been doing a lot of studying on that and basically trying to learn, you know, what, I didn't get to go to, and that was go to college and get a degree and, and, and sit in class and do those kind of things. But as I said, going back to that 13 years of my career, the opportunities of doing things like this, speaking to individuals, uh, you know, what's successful in business, not just business, but philanthropy, and you know, what is it that you're going to do after baseball? I sit back a lot of times, and that's basically what I do every day now, is basically trying to learn how I can grow my foundation and my efforts there. Uh, and, and two is basically, you know, I've been focusing a lot of about my back, you know, my, where I grew up in, in Hawaii. And, you know, tourism it plays a big role, but at some point we got to stop and find another avenue to create, you know, revenue and generate, you know, some kind of size tourism in the industry that, you know, the military is another big, but how can I create and go back? And, you know, I've been looking a lot into the hemp space. I think that's something that's been kind of organic and going back to that kind of stuff. So a lot of business ventures, looking at, you know, a lot of development ventures. Uh, you know, just everything across the board. But as I said, it's sitting back every day and understanding how lucky that my career gave me the platform to sit now and be able to come and speak with successful business people, successful individuals, and, and sit in a room and kind of play an impact now on their lives and, 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 and try to teach them how to do it. But I just basically said it's the same as, you know, winning as a baseball team. Like, if the team doesn't work together, you don't know how to work together. It's a long road. I mean, I tried business ventures and my, my teammates and I aren't working together, or my business partners, it's no fun, you know? so. That's what I've been doing a lot of, in, in a nutshell. And it's pretty crazy when you look back at the kid that, that left Hawaii, I think you were all for a football scholarship, right? Yes, I was. And you decided, I think it was Jim Jones, right? Jim Jones offered me the day I got drafted, I got called on the roof. Uh, I got, uh, actually, it wasn't, I was a roof five. Uh, and uh, this was the stuff, you know, uh, and I, actually I got drafted out of high school that morning. Uh, obviously in the way it's six hours behind, so I got a call at the butt cracker dawn that I got drafted in the sixth round. I was still sleeping. Uh, my mom walks in the room and says, someone's on the phone. Uh, I take that phone call. Uh, obviously it was the, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and they're saying, you know, we picked you sitting on the sixth round, uh, 193rd overall, 194th, whatever it was, I don't even remember. Um, but it's sitting there, and, and, and that afternoon we went about our business, and you know, my parents and I were very excited, we were happy. But also on the flip side, my mom was so big into education and she wanted me to go get a college degree and all that. But we come home that afternoon about 12 o'clock, I press the answering machine and it's June Jones and this is his first recruiting class at the University of Hawaii. And he says, hey Shane, I'd like to offer you a full scholarship to be the kicker. Uh, a kicker has just left and you know, his scholarship opened. A lot of people may know, people know this, but I did kick a 48 yard in high school. So I an athlete, I tell people like, I was blessed to be an athlete. I, I wasn't a baseball player growing up. I was an athlete that ended up choosing the game of baseball, and lucky enough, I achieved what I was going to achieve. So going back to that is, you know, he says, I'm like, kicker. Like, oh man, come on, really? But then I said to myself, to the rest of the boys, you know, he said to myself, he said, uh, hey, let me get kickers, trust me. Some of those kickers have laid some big dudes out in the game, if you watch correctly. Not very often, but it does happen. So nothing wrong with being a kicker. I would have been a faster kicker, I'll tell you that much. So uh, he says, you know, true voice, he says, well, 
Uh, you know, we'd also like you to come on board and probably do maybe we'll put you in reserves and we'll put you out as, as one of my slot backs and just see how it goes, but I'm going to bring you on as a kicker. So, of course, for me in my heart, like, that didn't sit very well. Like, I made a full ride to be a kicker in college. Like, but I was like, I was like, hey, my mom's getting, you know, her dream going to come true. Like, her son is going to go to college on a full ride scholarship. Like, if she doesn't have to pay a, you know, anything, like, this is life changing for me because my parents truthfully couldn't afford it. They would have gone back to me. I just stood at home and was all set and done with. But fast forward, I had to sit there, uh, maybe a week later, look at my mom and my dad and I sitting around the table just like this, four of us in the same kitchen I go home to, you know, uh, you know, my parents now. And, you know, it was a decision, it was a tough one. Uh, but I looked at my mom and, you know, going through all the things that was said and her telling me, looking at me and going, you're right now, aren't you? I get it, mom, I love you. Like, I, but, you know, on the flip side, I'm sitting there going, man, this may never happen again. Like, it's in front of me, like the chance of, hey, like, nobody's done it. So, like, it's not real. To everybody else in the room, it's not real. My parents are not real. No one's gone to the big leagues. No one's been a major league baseball player for Iowa and Maui. Like, why is my son going to be that one? Well, I had an enemy. So I knew that. They didn't know that. Or at least I thought I knew it, and I'll see it work out. But so I sat there and I said, you know, sorry. But I looked at my mom in the eye and I said, Mom, I'm going to go pro. And she kicks me under the table. <laughs> and I said, you know, like, uh, I'm kind of like trying to play it off, and I said, I'm super excited, and I'm gonna take the offer that you guys are presenting me, and you know, I'm gonna sign, you know, tonight, and I'm gonna be all signed to the soccer, and the rest is history. <laughs>